Hello, brothers and sisters. It's time for a daily devotional. Today, I picked a passage of God's words talking about how he balanced all things when he created them and the significance of that balance. Almighty God says, When God created all things, he used all sorts of methods and ways to balance them, to balance the living conditions of the mountains and lakes, of the plants and all kinds of animals, birds, and insects. His goal was to allow all kinds of living beings to live and multiply under the laws that he had established. None of the things of creation can go outside of these laws, and the laws cannot be broken. Only within this type of basic environment can humans safely survive and multiply, generation after generation. If any living creature goes beyond the quantity or scope established by God, or if it exceeds the growth rate, reproduction frequency, or number dictated by him, mankind's environment for survival would suffer varying degrees of destruction, and at the same time, mankind's survival would be threatened. If one type of living creature is too great in number, it will rob people of their food, destroy people's water sources, and ruin their homelands. That way, mankind's reproduction or state of survival would be immediately impacted. If just one type or several types of living beings exceed their appropriate number, then the air, temperature, humidity, and even the composition of the air within mankind's space for survival will be poisoned and destroyed to varying degrees. Under these circumstances, humans' survival and fate will also be subject to the threats posed by these ecological factors. So, if these balances are lost, the air that people breathe will be ruined, the water that they drink will be contaminated, and the temperatures that they require will also change and be impacted to varying degrees. If that happens, the environment for survival that inherently belong to mankind will be subject to enormous impacts and challenges. In this type of scenario, where humans' basic environments for survival have been destroyed, what would mankind's fate and prospects be? This is a very serious problem. Because God knows for what reason each of the things of creation exists for the sake of mankind, what the role is of every type of thing that he created, what kind of impact each thing has on mankind, and to what degree it benefits mankind. Because in God's heart, there is a plan for all of this, and he manages every single aspect of all the things that he created. That is, why every single thing that he does is so important and necessary for mankind. So from now on, whenever you observe some ecological phenomenon among the things of God's creation, or some natural law at play among the things of God's creation, you will no longer be doubtful of the necessity of every single thing created by God. You will no longer use ignorant words to make arbitrary judgments on God's arrangement of all things and his various ways of providing for mankind. Nor will you come to arbitrary conclusions about God's laws for all things of his creation. Amen. God's words are so very clear that when God created all things, he used many different methods and ways to balance everything the mountains, the lakes, the plants, animals, humans, everything that he made was to balance all different things. And having one of too many of one thing could destroy our environment, right? So his goal, he says, was to allow all kinds of living beings to live and multiply under the laws that he had established. And nothing can go outside of these laws. They cannot be broken, right? This is the most safest environment for us to survive and to multiply. And generation after generation, we can see that a lot of these things still abide within its laws. But if any living creature goes beyond the quantity or scope established by God, 
if, if it exceeds the growth rate, reproduction frequency, or number dictated by him, our environment for survival suffers to varying degrees of destruction. So looking at the world today, from my, what I see, I see we've destroyed a lot of our things, like the trash in the oceans. That's not normal. Moving animals from their homes, animals becoming extinct, other animals coming into existence. And so we've moved things around the earth. We've, we've taken everything out of its balance, but God still supplies for the life of all. So God reveals that you know, if one type of living creature is too great a number, it robs people of their food, destroys people's water sources, and ruins our homelands, which we can see is in a sense has taken place. People wanting to live in places we shouldn't live and moving things all around the earth. So it's affected our air. It's affected our temperature, the humidity, the weather, tornadoes and things like that. Of You know, taking down mountains by living in specific areas, moving things around the earth. We've done a lot of different things where we've poisoned our crops. We've poisoned a lot of different things and destroyed the living environment that God had built so perfectly for us. So God is the only one that can fix all these different things. And we can see from God's words that it's really important that we understand why God put things into existence and what is the significance behind it of having everything in its perfect balance so we can have the perfect living environment and be able to take care of that environment. And so God reveals that you know, the type of scenario where our basic environments have been destroyed yeah, what would mankind's fate and prospects be? That's a very serious problem. So God is the only one that knows why everything exists and the rules that he put into existence for all things. We don't know that. So we need to learn all these different things that God can teach us about the foods and the air and the sound and the temperature and the different environments for the different animals and things like that. So we can respect God's creation and be able to take care of it so we can maintain that perfect environment that he created us to live in. So God reveals too, and we, when we observe some ecological phenomenon among the things of God's creation or the natural laws among the things of his creation, we can no longer be doubtful of the necessity of every thing, single thing that God put into existence. Because some things we may not understand, like, hmm, why is this in existence? Why is that? Why did God create, you know, certain animals? We wonder like flies and bees and, you know, different insects that we may not understand or different animals, but they all have their purpose and significance behind it. And so we can, we will not come to, um, arbitrary conclusions about God's laws for all things of his creation, but learn to respect and honor them. I really like learning about these things about God because it shows us that, you know, that we take a lot of things for granted because we don't have understanding and our science cannot teach us the purpose behind what God created. So it's important to learn from our creator because he knows the truth behind all things about the laws and the balance that he put into existence that we need to maintain. When we start to mess with that and start to change that, then we see that we're harming our own environment, even unto destruction is the end result. So yeah, if you'd like to share anything about this passage, please feel free to do so because my sharing is a little bit limited, but I hope you like these types of passages of God's words because we can learn a lot from them and we can learn to respect what God has really given to us. So that's all I have today. I hope you like this passage of words and God bless you and we'll see you next time. If you'd like to join one of our online sermons, please do let me know. And we'll be glad to get you in so you can be on your way of reading more of God's words to learn more about how to understand the environments God gives us and how to welcome the second coming. So have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye.